Yet again with another episode. This is Hill, and this is Mass Effect. Welcome aboard the Normandy SR1. Alright, we're down in the lower deck here, and we've just finished um, working with the Alliance Requisition Officer. We've made some significant upgrades to our armor and assault rifle. So, hopefully in our next battle, we should see some changes for the better. All right, we're gonna do a little chatting here with Rex. So, we've got Saren on the run. It won't be long now. Saren's good, but I'm better. Good. He's rotten to the core. I could tell as soon as I met him. Why didn't you tell me this sooner? I would have if I thought it was important. I'll decide what's important. Now tell me how you know Saren. This was a while ago. A bunch of mercs were bragging about a job out near the edges of the Terminus systems. They said it paid well and the boss was never around to ride them. They said he was looking for more men, too. So I checked it out. I didn't know Saren was openly recruiting mercs. It wasn't that open, and he only showed his face once. We'd been raiding ships in the area for months when we took out this massive cargo freighter. Our biggest haul yet. I was on board checking bodies for valuables, looking for some extra credits. That's when I saw him. What did Saren want with the ship? I don't know what he wanted. He was just moving through the ship, watching. A couple of the mercs called him by name, but he never spoke to them. Never spoke to anyone. I had a really bad feeling about him, so I got the hell out. Didn't even wait to get paid. Whose ship was it? There was a Volus trading vessel. Big one. Lots of guards. But they were no match for us. What kind of cargo was the freighter carrying? What was Saren after? I don't know. All I saw on that ship was food and medical supplies. There were some basic weapons, but nothing big. If there was anything of value on that ship, I didn't see it. That's why I didn't mention it sooner. That's the only time you saw him? Yeah. Didn't even know who he was. Still wouldn't if I hadn't joined up with you. But my instincts were right. Every other merc on that mission turned up dead within a week. Every damn one. Hmm. So long, Rex. Shepard. Okay, so we continue to chat up with Rex because he is going to have a mission for us. Hopefully, soon. Oh, before I go, you said you're serving with Commander Shepard now? We saw him on the news here. He's cute. Later, sis. Tell me you didn't hear that. <laughs> Alright, he's gonna... He's not gonna shut this down yet. Afraid I did. Oh, shoot me now. <laughs> One of my sisters. That's Sarah, the youngest. Surprised to see you here, sir. Thought you'd be chatting up, what's her name? To Sony? Liara? Why would you think that? Scuttlebutt says you got a bit of a thing for her. I could understand why. The crew's off limits with the regs against fraternization. And at least she looks like a woman. Wow. Yeah, that is cold. You think I'm interested in Liara because she's the only one I'm allowed to date? So you are interested in her. 
course, it could be politics. Alien diplomat's daughter, us under orders to make nice with the bug-eyed monsters. What's up? You didn't come by to eavesdrop on family mail. Your family seems to be important to you. Yeah, we've always been close. Me and my sisters especially. With Dad on duty so much, I had to help Mom raise them. Did your father serve with the fleet? Yeah, took any crap posting he could get that offered space time. You know what? He worked his ass off trying to get recognized, but he never made it above servicemen third class. He was real proud when I made chief. First thing he did was salute. What about your mother? You haven't mentioned her. You must know what military wives are like. Strong because they have to be, able to raise kids while Dad's away on a six-month cruise. She has a degree in planetary geology. She and Dad both wanted to see new worlds. She gave up her career to raise us, though. You have more than one sister? Sounds like a big family. Yeah, I'm the oldest, then Abby, then Lynn. Sarah's the youngest. She's still in high school. With four girls, Dad used to say he felt more outnumbered at home than on maneuvers. Where did you grow up? <laughs> All over. We transferred a half a dozen times before I finished grade school. You go where personnel command sends you, right? I guess that's why I'm so tight with my sisters. We'd have to leave all our friends every two or three years. After helping raise them, your sisters still talk to you? Amazing. Things were tense between Sarah and me for a while. Then we bonded. Sounds like a story. Feel like sharing? Sarah got herself a boyfriend who wanted to go faster than she did. Mike. I didn't think he was a bad kid, just pushy. Lynn would send me these worried vid mails, and I'd tell her to relax. Where were you when this was going on? I was on active duty. Sarah's graduating high school this year. This was only a couple of years back. They were on Amaterasu. At the time, I was assigned to Chernobyl. Same cluster, but a dozen LY away. Close enough to talk regularly, too far to make it back in an emergency. I couldn't afford a fast packet flight. Um, yeah. Sounds like that situation didn't last. Mike thought they'd go for a romantic walk in the woods, because he figured it was past time they did the deed. She levered Mike face first into a tree and left. Didn't have a scratch on her. Good thing Mom and Dad had us all learn some kind of self-defense. I took emergency leave and walked Sarah to school for a few days. You said all of your sisters learned self-defense? Lynn did pistol practice, but didn't like it. She's kind of nervous. Sarah took Aikido. Abby decided to learn the sword. She always was a little weird. Likes big skirts and tops you have to tie her into. They do great things to her figure, though. So, what did you learn? One of Dad's friends taught me Marine hand-to-hand. -hand. Okay. You said all of your sisters learned self-defense? Lynn did pistol practice, but didn't like it. She's Sorry about that. Nervous. Sarah took Aikido. Abby decided to learn the sword. She always was a little weird. Likes big skirts and tops you have to tie her into. They do great things to her figure, though. Did anything happen while you were home? My last day out, Mike was waiting for us. Sarah had told her friends, so everyone at school knew what he did. He wasn't happy. I wanted to snap him in half, but Sarah gave me this look, this... Let me handle it. I need to do this alone look. She kept her cool, God bless her, as he screamed in her face. She just let him vent. Then he tried to punch her. I swear, she just flowed around him. Next thing I knew, he's face down on the sidewalk, and there's blood everywhere. He missed? When he swung, she just... She wasn't there anymore, and he fell. Hmm. She helped him stop the bleeding and had me call an ambulance. She told the paramedics he fell. Before they took him to the hospital, Mike touched Sarah's arm. I thought he was going to end up on the ground again. But he hung his head, whispered, I'm sorry, and started crying. Then she hugged him. The Williams women are a decisive bunch, Commander. We do things when we're ready. Not before, not after. Where was your father during this? Wasn't your family stationed near him? Dad always wanted to serve in space. But he wanted us to have real ground under our feet. He'd say, space is beautiful, but you can't raise a family there. 
I cannot rest from travel. I will drink life to the lees. All times I have enjoyed greatly have suffered greatly, both with those that loved me and alone. For always roaming with a hungry heart, much have I seen and known. Cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments. Okay. Let's try to tug at our heartstrings. I didn't know you liked classical literature. Ulysses was my dad's favorite poem. Every time he shipped out, he recorded me reading it. He had a dozen versions when he retired. Does he still like it? I sure hope so. I read it to his grave every time I go home. Oh, wow. Dad passed on a few years back. He's probably still watching, though. So behave. You mean from wherever we go after death? Dead on, Skipper. He's with God now. That's not a problem with you, is it? That I believe in God? You know that old saw, there's never an atheist in a foxhole? I've been in a lot of foxholes. Yeah, I guess you have. I've met a few people who were really weirded out by my faith. Because I work in space, I can't believe in a higher power. Jeez. Hello, have you people looked out the window? How can you look at this galaxy and not believe in something? I should get back to my duties. Didn't mean to take up so much of your time. What's your opinion on the last mission? Not sure I buy Dr. Tassoni's story, about her and her mom not talking. They're family, right? Not everyone's as close to their family as you are. Yeah, that's true. It's funny, I never really thought about that before. Too bad those ruins got destroyed. I mean, they lasted thousands of years. That's impressive. We'll talk later, Williams. Looking forward to it, Skipper. All right, well, we got 48 experience from that. Hopefully we're making some progress with her. Let's see if Garrus has anything new to say. Commander, how are you? Why did you want to be a CSEC officer in the first place? Hmm, that's a good question. There were several reasons, I guess. Like what? Probably the same as most officers. I wanted to fight injustice, wanted to help people. I guess my father had something to do with it, too. He was CSEC, one of the best. I grew up hearing about his accomplishments or seeing his picture on the vids after a big arrest. He's taking my resignation pretty hard. He's not impressed that you're going after Sarah? My father's a CSEC man to the bone. Do things right or don't do them at all, he says. He thinks I'm being too rash, too impatient. He's worried I'll become just like Sarah. He actually talked me out of becoming a Spectre when I was younger, for the same reasons. You were asked to be a Spectre? Well, I was targeted as a possible Spectre candidate, me and about a thousand other Turian military recruits. I could have received special training, but my father didn't like it. He despises the Spectres. He hates the idea of someone having unlimited power with no accountability. He wouldn't like you, Commander. <laughs> no offense. Not all Spectres are like Saren, you know? Of course not. But Saren's not going to play by our rules, c -Sec's rules. If you want to nail Saren, you need to send someone who isn't restricted by policies and procedures. You're a quick learner, Garrus. We'll beat him at his own game. It's the only way to stop someone like him. I'm right behind you, Commander. Okay, I got 96 experience from that. Um, I guess this was the part of the conversation that I missed the first time when I talked to him and didn't get any experience. Anyhow. Continue to level up. I think it's time to get up here to the galaxy map. All right, so we need to find the second crime boss. Let's see here. I believe... Well, let will just show you guys what we're working with here. Using the journal and instead of missions, because there are only like two main missions, Novarian Pharos, 
we've been doing all these assignments that most of them we picked up on the Citadel before we left. So what we are doing is this hostile takeover. Finish the crime lords. So two crime lords are located in the Han system of the Gemini Sigma cluster and in the Dis system of the Hades Gamma cluster. I've killed the first, now eliminate the second. So we're in the Dis system. We need to head to Gemini Sigma. If I'm understanding this properly. All right, let's zoom out. Not sure, did we um, check all these planets? I think we did. say we did. Okay, we are looking for Gemini Sigma, I believe. There it is. All right, Joker. Lay in a course. Commander, urgent message from Alliance Command uh -oh. coming in. Uh-oh. I'll patch it through. Shepard, this is Admiral Hackett from Alliance Command. We've got a situation here and you're the only one that can handle it. What do you need, Admiral? There's an Alliance training ground where we test weapons and technology and live fire simulations. One of the VIs we use to simulate enemy tactics in the drills is no longer responding to our override commands. It's gone rogue. Are you telling me this computer is thinking on its own? We're not stupid, Shepard. This is a virtual intelligence, not a true AI. It's not self-aware, and it can't access any external systems. We didn't do anything illegal here. Virtual intelligence support is critical to our military success. VIs process thousands of status reports and react in nanoseconds. No human can do that. We need you to fight your way through the training ground of the VI core and manually disable it. Can't you disable it remotely? Our fail-safes aren't responding. The VI operates on a closed network. It can affect any external systems, but we don't have any direct access to its processes. We could bomb it from orbit, but the damage to the facility would be catastrophic. We'd prefer to have someone shut down the core. Someone like you. I know Spectre's answered the Council, but you're still human. You're still part of the Alliance military, and right now we need you. The VI controls all the facility's weapons, drones, and automated defenses. You're the only one that can pull this off, Shepard. Good luck. Okay. Well, we will do that a little bit later. Okay, I wanted to really find that crime boss, but I let let let's try to stick on on mission. Here. I think this is it. The Han system. All right, Joker, lay in a course. We'll come back to all this later. If we're going to take on that rogue VI, we, we need to level up a little bit more. All right, let's survey Paravin. Uh-oh. Matriarch's writings recovered. Scans of Paravin revealed an unmanned station in geosynchronous orbit. Your salvage team found no evidence on the origins of the station, but they did find one of Matriarch Dillanaga's writings on board. I tell you that Matriarch Dillanaga, she's everywhere. All right. Patatanless. Patatanless. All right, we have got a large deposit of beryllium.
Far Crowthu. Okay, there's nothing there. Huningto. Nothing there. Alright, we have Mavagon. Did I go to Paravin? Alright, well, we just did. Alright, this should be the final planet. Mavagon. Yes, and it's asking us to land. Uh-oh. There's a warning. It's a level 1 cold hazard. Mavagon is a small rock and ice planet with a thin atmosphere of ammonia and methane. The surface is frozen and mainly composed of tin with deposits of potassium. The planet has a rudimentary ammonia-based life, mainly concentrated around geothermal vents deep underground. Severe storm cycles are common due to limited visibility. Navigation may be difficult. All right, let's land. Okay, who do we want to take? Space Cop, definitely. Um... Take Caden. All right, drop successful. Oh, this is hazard level two. Thought it said this was going to be level one hazard. Okay, we have debris and then the syndicate hideout. All right, we'll head over here to the debris and collect that. And then go to the syndicate hideout. This is going to be fun. Yeah, this is one of those planets with these steep, steep hills and mountains, but we seem to be able to climb it. So far, so good. Now this would be a planet I would hate to be stuck on. Look at this. These are blizzardous conditions. Top of this mountain. Oh, nope, right here. Crash probe. Alright, we only have moments before we freeze. Polonium and Proton rounds. We'll take those. Okay, let's get in the Mako. Quickly, quickly. Alright, let's set a course for the Syndicate hideout. Yeah, I just want to get this out of the way before we get distracted with all these other missions. Now that Rogue VI is a very significant mission because it kind of changes your powers once you complete it. So we do want to do that. I think level 20 is really what uh, set that off when I reach level 20. So we are going to need to uh, 
you know, get that evolution of our powers, especially when we come up across the people like Matriarch Benezia. Okay, this can be somewhat challenging trying to find the way to the top of the mountain. And let's do a save because I think it's easy to die here too. Because I think they have some armed uh, turrets up here. And I don't know if there is a easy way to come up here or not. Doesn't seem like it. Uh, uh, we made it. All right, yes, there are turrets, three of them. Mako with our increased experience rather than get out and fight these things on foot. Alright, where is the entrance? Okay, right here. Okay, let's get inside. Uh-oh, what was that explosion? save here. So you can see Shepard now has uh, different armor. I guess the same as uh, Caden now. We're matching. But this is a huge increase in shields and damage protection. Alright, check for crates, people. Ah, look at this. Med kit. All right. We've got enemies up here. Make sure everybody's got the right type of gun, okay? over here. Uh, I can use some damping. Sabotage. And warp. Got him. crime boss right here. Alright, I think Garrus just went down. Let's use some overload on this dude. Oh, great. Hmm, Annie has immunity. 
reload. Lock shield. I will destroy you. This is not good. How about immunity? Not immunity, but uh what you call it unity. Just me. Upgrades, the new armor, the rifle still went down. All right, we're gonna have to lure these guys. Whoops! Wow, I just went out the wrong way. Come on now. That's being completely turned around. All right, I think I want you guys to stay back here. I'm going to see if I can't lure these people. Barrier up. Krogan. All right, Caden. Overload. Got him. right there. Okay, we got the Krogan down. Coming back here, fellas. Another Krogan. All right, let's use overload and damping. Give them that. And here they come. Come on, come on. Okay, 
we got those two. I will destroy you. boss I will destroy you All right, what have we got here, Caden? Okay, another one down. down here. I think we've thinned them out enough. Got him. All right, second crime lord defeated. That's both of them. No doubt Helena Blake will be overjoyed to learn that these two scum are no longer a problem. Okay. Perimeter secured. That was something. I'm really kind of upset though. This new armor and this this gun didn't really seem to help all that much, but hey. We're, we're coming along, coming along. Starting to level up. we've got in here all right looks like we've got lots of uh, loot all right high explosive level 4 medical interface 4 take those Ablative coating and fusion explosive. We'll take those. Average decryption. All right, here we go. We got it. All right, Terminator 4. Oh, this is Batarian uh, assault rifle. And a tsunami for assault rifle and a hammer for sniper rifle. We'll take those. Okay, take the med kit. All right. We've got everything in here. Let's see if this room has any loot for us. it does. Wetware. Uh, Solaris amp and a Prodigy amp. Okay. And we got a medical station here. Oh, come on! All right, so light Turian armor and medium heavy armor. We'll take this. 
Let's see, Garrus, do you need any uh, better armor here? Wow. Well, this is better. Not by much. Well, the shields are better. Okay, I'll give you this. Mm, that is interesting, those colors. Uh, let's see, can we give you an upgrade? Guess a blade of coating. Okay. I'll give him the ablative coating. And let's see. We can definitely give him a better rifle. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, okay, um, what else have we got? Yeah, these sniper rifles. It's uh, turn those to Omni Gel. Okay, so here we are with some amps. Let's see what these do. So the Solaris amp only gives you three more of a cooldown bonus. Wow. I'll let him have that. But this... Okay, hold on. Let me see. What does my amp do? I have a Polaris amp. Uh, I think I'm going to keep my Polaris amp. have this prodigy okay this hydra human armor doesn't really give you that much All right, this should be good for now. All right, it is time to head back to the Normandy, I believe. I don't think there was anything else on this planet. Hold on, let's just make sure there are no hidden crates. this med kit all right let's get in this mako and what have we got here on our map? That was it. We are returning to the Normandy.
Okay, well, the two crime lords are dead, and now we will need to meet with Helena Blake. And we will do that in our next episode. This is Hill, and I'm out.